Hi, I'm Jim Bailey, CFO of Neuron Wireless. Uh, I'm doing something that I haven't done before, which is to do a one-to-one -one video with uh, anybody that's watching. So this follows along from some of the ones that Francis has done, but we thought it would be a way to do things going forward, which is to provide something a little bit uh, shorter and, and maybe talking about some specific issues that, that uh, are current with our, our shareholders. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to do is talk about our Q2 results. Uh, a little bit about what we've done in the first half of 2024 and also what our plans are for the future. Uh, so we put our, Q our second quarter results out at the end of August. Uh, we saw quite a good uh, increase in the share price at the time. And I think what that was, was some of our shareholders seeing the same positive trends that we saw in the numbers. <coughs> share price hasn't kept up, but uh, maybe by talking about some of these things today, we can uh, get it back to the level that it was because, frankly, we've been doing everything the same. We've been doing all the positive things that we said. Uh, we've been doing more since we've been able to close the financing in the second half of the year. So what are some of the themes that came out of the numbers? Um, <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to talk about was our revenues. Uh, you'll see in our, our, our first half of the year, we generated about $2 million of revenue, and three-quarters of that came from the network as a service business. What was important about that network as a service revenue, and that's coming from Cameroon and DRC, was the fact that, and it's really a good news, bad news story. <clears throat> We've talked about, and we talk about in the MDNA, how we have this rule of IFRS 15, and that is because we... Uh, have a transfer of sites in our contracts with Orange, for the time being, we have to recognize those as a sale of sites. So good news and bad news. In the first half of the year, we didn't sell any sites. We didn't bring any new sites live. Uh, so it meant that the, we didn't have to take this IFRS 15 adjustment. So what you saw in the NAS revenue is more pure network as a service flows. And that was uh, both the revenue and the costs. The fact is about our costs is we've been paying for all of the sites that we have in the field. But unfortunately, we haven't until now been able to invoice all of those. But what we did in the second quarter is we, we were able to invoice those arrears. And so you get a pure kind of NAS picture from that. And especially in Cameroon, if you look at those numbers on their own, we had a gross profit in Cameroon. Uh, after taking all direct costs, including some of the local overheads, of about 74%. I'll talk a bit about that later, but it, it helped contribute to a, a total gross profit of about 60% for the company in the first half of the year. The reason it was a bit lower was some of the costs that we incurred in the DRC, uh, and I'll talk a bit about that too in, in, when it comes to site economics. But there are some things going on behind the NAS contracts that we see improving as we add more sites and bring more sites live. So that was the revenue story. Uh, we had some high costs as well, especially administrative costs, and we did talk about what those, where those came from in the video. Um, there were a lot of costs associated with closing the Signum Finance. By the end of the, the quarter in June and then coming into July when we drew down, there were a lot of costs associated with getting Signum conditions satisfied. The good news about those is having done them, the future financings, we're not going to be incurring those same costs. So we announced in May a uh, term sheet for a 15 million US financing to possibly go up to 70 million. We're able to use a lot of the stuff that we did for Signum for that again. So we don't have to repeat. It was about the structure and compliance and some of the registrations and so on that we had to do in Africa. We're not going to have to repeat that. So the good news is those were kind of one-off costs, but they were a lot associated with getting that financing over the line. The other costs we incurred were uh, financing charges, interest charges actually against the short-term debt. So again, we've been asked with investors, you know, where is the financing? And we had been delayed, very much delayed in bringing Signum over the line. And that's why Signum was actually very significant. It was the first financing into Neuron Africa to be devoted to the build of new sites. But it has meant that in order to finance the head, 
headquarters in Canada, we've had to incur uh, short-term borrowings like the factoring and like some of these other things. And so we incurred interest associated with that. Those charges are non-cash, so that's good news. And what it means is we will focus on, uh, it means that it means that those interest charges are rolling up. So I say good news, it means there's no cash out. It does mean we'll have to pay at some point in the future. But our plan is to raise cheaper financing elsewhere in order to repay that so we don't see the uh, those First of all, we get rid of those interest costs, but also we don't have to convert those and see the dilution that so many investors are worried about. So those are some encouraging things behind the profit and loss. When it comes to the balance sheet, there are a couple uh, things going on there. Uh, first of all, we've had, you know, as much as we've had uh, financing issues, we have also had to rely on the goodwill and, and the strategic relations we have with some of our vendors, some of our suppliers, some of our suppliers that haven't been paid or that have been providing services that, that we're not generating enough income. And I'll talk a bit about that more. But we've been able with all of our vendors and suppliers to sh to share the story to show them where the business is going to show them benefits so take some of those site economics that we're generating now and show how as we add more sites those economics and that cash is, is going to lead to better things to come as we close this financing and actually we started this in may we started repaying some of our payables we started to repay some of the some of those vendors that had been patient and waiting for us. And so we agreed repayment plans so that we could have a phased kind of orderly flow of cash to see those things drawn down. Oh, by the way, as we entered into new agreements to help provision our new sites. So really encouraging for Francis and I was to see some of the support and thank you to our, our suppliers that have supported us and have supported the company. But in the meantime, we paid down about 5% of our accounts payable from May until now, uh, five or 6%. So it's, it's, it's a meaningful number and it will only get lower as we go. The other thing we did, and Francis talked about it in his last video, is took some of this cash and repaid some of that short-term debt as well. We took 450000 U.S. that went to repay, and that is going to avoid any potential dilution from having to convert that. We also have a payment plan going forward for that, then, that supplier or that creditor. Um, all of this is coming from some of the positive numbers that we're seeing from the network as a service business. And one of the things that we had to do leading up to the closing of Signum as well was agree with the vendors, the suppliers and the creditors in Canada how they would rank as regards Signum. So we have Neuron Africa and then we have Neuron Canada. Signum money went into Neuron Africa and we were able to agree with all of our short-term creditors that the, the the where Signum's claims came and ended and where how Neuron Africa money is to be distributed and all those kinds of things. So that was another very encouraging thing, but took a fair amount of effort leading up to closing Signum. But now, having done it, we're not going to have to do it again. This leads me to a, another point. Another question I get is this whole notion of non-dilutive financing. And we've talked about this idea and bringing non-dilutive financing into Neuron Africa. And, the, and, and so the question is, you know, how does that work? <clears throat> well, there's a couple things going on. First thing about the Signum financing um, is we're able to capitalize all of that interest. And so, it, and actually the Signum uh, loan has one bullet repayment in two years time. So that means we're not having to repay now when cash is king. We can devote cash to the to the build and then leverage some of our positive site economics to pay down in the future. Now, we announced in May another financing, another debt financing of 15 million U.S. Uh, that will go to refinance Signum. And so that was what Signum was in place for. It was a bridge to take us to a bigger financing like this. Part of agreeing that 15 million financing was actually talking to Signum about potentially rolling their loan over and not having to repay it. So it's early days and maybe some of our uh, uh, Signum uh, or so on are, are watching this video. But, you know, we believe that we have 
uh, agreement in place to possibly roll that over so we're not going to have to repay. And then what happens is we have a longer term loans up to like seven years with actually a two year capital repayment holiday. So we will have to service the interest in the meantime, but what it means is we're not repaying the capital, again, devoting the money to the build, again, devoting the money to generating the positive site economics that we're seeing the 74 percent uh, gross profit <clears throat> the other thing that we will be doing and and is raising equity into neuron africa so uh, what does that mean neuron africa is 100 percent by no neuron canada 100 percent owned by neuron canada it means that we're not beholden to the public market share price and neuron africa uh, we all know, and, and certainly we've seen it, and, and you know, I'm surprised that we got this positive uptick when we announced our results at the end of August, and here we are not one month later, and we've seen the share price trickle on back. The first half, like I said, uh, we're doing the same things we did in the first half, in the second half, and oh, the advantage, in July, we brought in the Cigna money, which has allowed us to build and increase our business, as everyone's been asking us to do. So, uh, I, it's surprising that the share price has done what it has done, but good news is we're not beholden to that when you get to Neuron Africa. So, what does a, a financing at the Neuron Africa level look like? What does an equity financing at the Neuron Africa level look like? The Neuron Africa is the owner of our network as a service business. The network as a service businesses, these are infrastructure businesses. High fixed cost to pay at the front, but recurring revenue that comes. As we've said before, as soon as you turn on a site, we're able to identify the, the mobile phones in that under that site and they're immediately generating revenue and that's because these are prepaid phones so people already have credit on their phones they can use it virtually from the time that the site switches on that's the infrastructure business and that's recurring revenue so what do how do we agree to raise equity at that level well we say to our investor look we've got this number of sites now uh, it's a fraction of the 5,000 that we now have under contract. But have a look at that 74% gross profit and improving at that at the Neuron Africa level. Okay, Have a look at that number, which is contributing to the 60% overall. Multiply up the amount of revenue that we're going to generate. Multiply up that contribution. Take a, account of the fixed costs that we have, and you can see the value that's going to be generated into Neuron Africa. So the types of structures we have, and, and, and maybe some of those investors are watching this too, but they will know that these are very well-known structures, is we'd agree to say, okay, we'll give you a certain amount of equity. It will convert into a value, say, in the future, and we'll use the market value in the future to determine the price at that time. So it's a kind of a, a structured mechanism. But we can also say, look, we've done this financial modeling. Here's what building these number of sites looks like. Here's the cash generation. So we use the discounted cash flow or an EBITDA multiple in the future. We discount that back. We say that's what the business is worth today, and let's agree that and we can build other provisions into those types of agreements. So it, the private vehicle gives us a lot more flexibility to negotiate those kind of terms. The other reason that it's non-dilutive is because cash we generate at Neuron Africa, we're able to upstream that to Canada. We'll talk in a minute about our second economics, but being able to upstream it to Canada means we can repay some of that sort of expensive short-term debt that we have at the parent level. It means we don't have to convert it to shares. We don't have to dilute any further. So bringing the debt and the equity at the Neuron Africa level, building the engine of NAS sites and generating that cash allows us to clear out some of that financing without diluting any further. So what about the site economics? We've been doing a lot of analysis on this, especially in Cameroon, and we've seen some really, really encouraging numbers. There's a couple of things now, and I talked about 74% gross profit. We have some fixed elements of our costs in these markets. One of those is our uh, satellite. The way we buy satellite, so satellite is used to convey the uh, communications from the site itself back to the mobile operator's core network. And we use satellite to do that because we're operating in very remote regions. And that's the actually the only way to do it in most cases. 
it's also a feature of the Neuron technology. And, you know, I came into Neuron uh, relatively recently. The company's been going for years. It's got installations of technology globally. It's very robust technology. And one of the features of it is it's very efficient in the utilization of that satellite. However, when we buy satellite, we have to buy bulk capacity because it costs money to provide satellite. And so you have to pay a big fit cost. In essence, buying a pipe for the, the NAS business. But what that means is that cost doesn't change as we add new sites. It, it kind of goes in a, in, a, in a step function, but we have room within that step function to almost, almost uh, I would say, increase by about 30% the number of sites that are, that are in the field right now without increasing that cost. So that's one cost that stays fixed. The other cost that stays fixed is our local uh, operating expenses. We have teams in the field providing uh, repair and maintenance, uh, monitoring and the network operations and so on, which, which you know, will increase as we add more scale. But saying that, if you have a network operations center, it can monitor 100 sites as easily it can monitor 500 sites. So those costs don't change. The other things is you have central administration, you have your network planning, you have your finance and administration, you have some of the insurance and so on that for the most part stays fixed. So those are other costs that we see uh, that will help improve our set, uh, site economics as we get to scale. And that's why Francis and I have talked about getting to the number of sites that are going to get us to EBITDA positive, hopefully by the beginning of 2025, and that's at a group level. And that's the way we're able to do it, by just adding scale and taking advantage of some of those fixed costs. So our projections for sites in the field right now think we'll go from that 74% in Cameroon to maybe about 80%. Uh, which is, you know, a 6% improvement uh, per, on a percentage basis. Add that across accelerating number of sites, and you can see how the site economics and the value story and that investor story is really compelling to new people coming in. We have in the DRC, we have to get up to scale. We want to start building more in the DRC. We're paying for that satellite pipe. We're paying the cost of the people there. But we need to generate more revenue to see the site economics really kick in to the same extent that they are. We're seeing really encouraging numbers in the DRC and growth in traffic there as well. Um, and, oh, by the way, we have a number of sites in inventory. So the cost of bringing new sites live from this Signum financing is nowhere. It's, it's mostly covered. And again, I talk about these suppliers that helped us and showed their belief in our model. Some of those have pay, we've paid for goods that are sitting in inventory. We'll now convert those out. And those are some of the benefits that we're seeing. And that's why we're we're working with our suppliers closely to, to give them some of the benefit of what we're doing. So um, that's how the site economics work. That's how the, the, this non-dilutive financing works. Um, it's all, it, you know, it's, we've, we've closed the financing. We're now building, as Francis said in one of his videos, you know, you don't start building the next day after the money drops. It takes a while to get the logistics all lined up. It takes time to get all the the people and people in the field and all of that working, but we'll continue to report on that growth. We're, we're, we know that site build is the number one priority and that's what we're doing just now. So we're hoping that that will start to, we'll be able to show more reports. We'll, we'll uh, do these types of videos uh, more regularly to respond to some of the questions that people have. If, if, if anyone watching has any video, any questions, please, uh, or ideas for videos of things that we'd like to see us talk about, please send questions in. Frank Candido is our investor relations guy. He's uh, very accessible. Send questions in. We'll be happy to address them. But again, the message here is, look, the first half of, this, of 2024, we showed some really good results. We're doing the same thing in the second half of 2024 that we did in the first half by optimizing our, our sites, by achieving those site economics with the added advantage of, of funding that dropped and you know came into the company in July, so the beginning of Q3. So we expect to see some better numbers and we just can see expect to see those to continue. So that's uh, all I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, thanks very much for watching and look forward to telling you more in the future. Thanks a lot.